Good evening traders, Douglas here. Today I'm going to show you how I use Bookmap's absorption indicator in combination with its MBO bundle, also known as the SI indicator, the stops and icebergs indicator. I've been trading treasuries lately, been trading it for the exact same reason most people don't trade treasuries, because it is uber, uber slow and methodical. All right, now I need a little bit of that in my life. I've got a lot of distractions going on at work. It's hard for me to pay attention sometimes. And if I've got a slow moving instrument like treasuries, I don't have to be keep my eye on it, you know, like every second. So let's take a look at what I do. When I trade treasuries, I don't use any charts whatsoever. All I use is a book map and I use uh, four different instruments. So we're using TLT, which is the ETF for treasuries, uh, ZN, ZF, and ZB. These are the biggest instruments for treasuries. Now, we use all four of these in conjunction with each other because it just gives you more information about what's going on in the total market. There's a lot of spreading that can go on in treasuries. You know, you might see a big event happen in ZF, for example, and then the opposite event happens in ZN, negating what happens in ZF. So just trading one of these at a time, I'm sure can be done, but it's better to have all four. And really, once the market is in unison, if they're all working together, those are typically the best trades. Now, that doesn't happen all the time. Usually, you kind of have to filter through and figure out what's important and what's not. Uh, but when they're all together, that's, that's the good stuff. And that's what happened. So let's play this out. I'll make it as quick as possible. So we're going to speed it up. Uh, but I'll show you the trade that I took today. It was basically, it's what I call uh, just a give me trade, like the market's trying to hand you cash. If only you'll take advantage of it. Of course, you need these tools to be able to do that. So right here, the market opens up on, uh, well, everything, <laughs> 8.30 central. But on TLT, uh, you'll see this big sell bubble comes in. And you see these yellow dots here, these squares. This is Bookmap's absorption indicator. And so this is buy absorption. So we've had 110, almost 111,000 buyers that refreshed their limit orders, trying to absorb all of the aggressive market sell orders that were coming in, trying to take out that price level. Okay, so the buyers are absorbing the sellers and trying to either stop price, send it in the other direction. At least that is what we're assuming they're doing. Who knows? what their real intentions are in the broader market, right? But that is typically the way to play it. And, you know, uh, I actually had a down bias here, and you'll see me take a short trade here in a second on ZB. Uh, I actually had a down bias. I thought this was going to fail. The uh, buy absorption was going to fail and that we're going to keep going lower. But then I'll show you exactly why I got out of the trade and flipped around and went long for a really nice win. Uh, real quick though, we trade on the ZB when trading these because ZB is the most volatile of the three. So you don't get a lot of big moves in treasuries. So when it does move, you want the most movement possible. All right. And it adds a little more risk, of course, but uh, that's why I trade on the ZB plus ZB is worth around, I think, 31 and a quarter per tick, $31 and a quarter per each tick, whereas the ZN is like 15 bucks. So not only do you get more ticks moving on the ZB, but each tick is worth about twice as much, a little over twice as much as what's on the ZN. ZF, I don't trade at all. That's just uh, for informational purposes for me. So let's trade this out. So we've got the big buy absorption come in, and then we had this 1800 sell ice on ZN. And that's not huge for ZN. If you look, I mean, there's 4,000 limit orders on each level or more. Uh, so 1800 is not massive. But you see, we did break down and I got in short. You see a couple little contracts here waiting to try to get out. But then, let's pause this for a second. Something very important happens. 9,000, almost 10,000 buy ice came in on ZN. Now that is very big for treasuries. 
and over here simultaneously 348 got in on ZF 348 is not big however the fact that these two are lining up with each other at the same price level and we've got the buy absorption and we just got filled this red line here is the high liquidity so that big player wanted to get filled he got his fill and then propped up it's probably the same person we don't know or institution or whatever um, now they're trying to prop up that trade and send in the direct the other direction right they got their orders filled now they're ready to make their profit let's resume now if you look down here uh, i'll get out with like one tick i think and then my other uh, contract breaks even because I did not want to, I might have lost a tick on that, so I might have broke even on that full trade. Doesn't matter. Uh, you'll see real quickly here, as soon as I get out, I switch my bias and I get in with four contracts right there. One, two, three, four. Here's my stop down here, so not a whole lot of risk going on moving my targets up much higher for bigger profit targets than your risk you know that's the goal in trading of course is to make more in each winner than you lose on your losers duh right but the more you can do that the better i mean you can win only 30 percent of your trades and still be profitable if you do things correctly all right and we've got now 100 buy ice on zb again that's not a lot but the fact that We've got 10,000 here, we've got 348 here, we've got 100 here, there's nothing that shows anything about selling. We've got buy absorption over here on TLT. Nothing in terms of massive selling or hidden selling, you know, things that people wanna mask so that you can't figure out what they're doing. Everything's pointing towards a buy. So we're feeling real good. We'll speed this way up now. And you'll see what happens. You gotta be patient. You gotta be patient on treasuries, okay? But that also gives you time to reassess. All right, hopefully it doesn't give you time to talk yourself out of it if it is a good trade still. But there, I mean, there's nothing going on here that, that says get out or go short. All right, so I've moved my contracts around. I shouldn't have done that. I should have kept them in the original uh, spot but I was trying to limit uh, my risk completely. So uh, I'm now at break even after I got out of my first contract. So now I can't lose. Get out of my second contract, then it goes up to where my original placement was. Uh, there's this high liquidity mark here, so I was a little worried about that possibly being a reversal zone. And when we hit that high liquidity on ZB, uh, we get 835 sell stop run here on ZN. Okay, so this is a perfect place for a pullback. Could have come all the way down, took me out, could have reversed completely. Uh, you know, you don't, can't guarantee anything that's gonna happen, but uh, I was thinking that this was just going to be uh, sort of a temporary pullback. And uh, so I'm moving my sell stop around, trying to mitigate risk, but trying not to get hit at the same time. And I played that correctly this time. And so we do go back up. Let's go market. There we go, start moving back up. We go back up, we break this high liquidity mark and then you'll see something happen over here on ZN again. I'm trailing my stop now. Break of the high liquidity mark. But when we broke the mark, what happens? So back here, we had that 835 sell stop that kind of slowed down the market for a minute, came back up, hit another one, hit another one. Now this big seller has been filled here. So you don't know, I my bias, even though I'm out now, 
was that we were still going to go long. And we did later in the day, but this was enough uh, for a big pullback. And here's really the killer over here is we've got sell absorption coming in, even though there's buy absorption too. Uh, the fact that nothing had happened until the open, you know, we had all that buy absorption in the open and then nothing, 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 nothing. And then you get this absorption activity here along with these sell stop runs, along with the high liquidity fill. It's a lot of good signals that, you know, this could be a bigger pullback coming. Um, I was hoping that this was just the battle. It would fail and then uh, keep going up. But at the end of the day, what ends up happening is the market comes back, retests this 10,000 buy stop area. Okay. It retests that area and then it just goes up and up and up for the rest of the day. That's very common to come back and retest these big uh, zones of liquidity. The market knows that's an important price. So a lot of times it's got to do a price check. Price check aisle three, man. Comes back and says, hey, is this price still fair? Comes back, checks it out. Everything looks good. And then we can move on. It happens a lot. But that's it. Keeping this video short. Peace out.